Hello everyone and welcome back to another Rogue World of Warcraft video. Uh, today we're going to be going over your uh, gearing for Priebus in Phase 1 of the Burning Crusade. Uh, before we get started, if you're finding this information helpful, please make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That helps out quite a lot. And you can check me out live on Twitch. I'll be streaming over at twitch.tv slash apoptosis808. And without further ado, let's just get right into it. So before we start talking about the actual pieces of gear, I just want to go over how I've broken it down for this video. I'm going to be giving out several suggestions per item slot because while some of them might be better than others or even better than some of the raid gear that you can get, it's almost going to be impossible to obtain some of it. Uh, some of them drop off, are just world drops that you might never see. Some of them drop off of world bosses and maybe your server is really populated like mine and it's going to be really difficult to farm those. Uh, but let's take a look at the head slot for uh, gearing up for Karazhan. So the first one we're going to take a look at is called Mask of the Deceiver. This is obtained by getting 50 Badges of Justice. So Badges of Justice is a new type of token that you can get in the Burning Crusade. You get this by doing heroic dungeons and different raids as well. Heroic dungeons, the bosses will give you one Badge of Justice per boss. Uh, as well as there are some daily quests that you can do to do different heroics and get multiple badges of justice as well. So if you're able to get a group and just grind all these heroics over and over and over before you head into Karazhan, maybe you will get 50 badges of justice. If you can, this is quite a good item to get. A lot of lists are having it sim right about where the Karazhan um, helmet is. That's called the Netherblade face mask. So just from stats alone, it's basically the same as the gear that you're going to get in Karazhan. Uh, if you're not able to get that, though, maybe you can't secure the group or you can't get the badges of justice or whatever it is, you can always go for what's called Helm of the Claw. Now, this is going to be quite a bit easier for you to get. Uh, it's done by doing a quest called the Warlord's Hideout, which is a quest for the dungeon Quailfang Reservoir. So all you got to do, go in, get that quest, complete the dungeon, and then you can get the Helm of the Claw, which might not be as good as Mask of the Deceiver, but it's a lot easier to get. All right, guys, now the second type of item I want to go over is for the next slot. So as you can see over my head, the best one that you can get right now is called the Choker of Vile Intent. This is obtained by getting 25 Badges of Justice. So again, that's just running heroic dungeons uh, and getting Badges of Justice off the bosses and doing those daily quests for them. If you're, again, not able to really get many of those heroics done, though, before you want to step foot into Karazhan, there's another item, which is called the Bone Chain Necklace, that you can get out of the Underbog, just off of the boss, the Black Stalker. Now, a third item that I do want to bring up to your guys' attention is for Jewel Crafters only. But if you are taking Jewel Crafting, you absolutely want to make sure that you craft this. It is called the Braided Eternium Chain. Uh, now, the reason why this is so good is because of that buff that it gives to your party. If you are able to get this and you are able to buff your party, uh, this is simming better even than the Choker of Vile Intent. So I highly, highly, highly recommend if you're going jewel crafting, make sure you grab one of these before you head into Karazhan. Okay, so the next one that we're going to want to talk about here, guys, is the shoulder pads that you can get before heading into Karazhan. So the one that you're going to want to try to grab is called the Waste Walker Shoulder Pads. This is out of Akanai Crypts, and it will drop off of the boss Avatar of the Martyred. This is not shouldn't be very difficult for you guys to get, so I would say this is a pretty solid one to try to grab before heading into Karazhan. But maybe you can't find a group, or maybe you're having difficulty having a drop. Maybe you're just getting unlucky or something. Um, there is uh, some alternative pieces you can try to grab. Uh, one is the Mantle of Paranold. Now, this is another dungeon boss. This drops off of the Epoch Hunter in Old Hills, Brad Foothills. Uh, again, it is worse than the Waste Walker shoulder pads, but maybe you're having better luck in Old Hills, Brad, and that'll drop for you. Um, if you're Alliance, there's actually a third one that you could try to go for that is pretty good as well. Uh, which is called the Expedition Scout Shoulder Pads. Now, this is off of a quest called Fell Embers, which is in Hellfire Peninsula, but you're only able to do this again, guys, if you are on the Alliance. Uh, so for all of you Horde out there, myself included, uh, we're just going to have to try to go for one of the other ones. 
Alrighty, now for chess pieces, we do have a few options once again. The best one that you can get before going into Karazhan is called the Terra Weave Tunic. But this is one of those ones that I'm not sure if I'm even going to see either. Uh, this is dropped off of the Doomwalker, which is a essentially a world boss that's in Shadow Moon Valley. It's guarding the Black Temple. You're going to need a raid in order to kill this. And I'm sure that for most of you guys out there, your servers are going to have this on farm by maybe some of the more, I don't know, tryhard guilds that are out there. Uh, if you manage to snag it, that's great. This is an amazing chess piece you can get. But if you're like me, you're probably going to be going after what's called the Vest of Vengeance. Now, the Vest of Vengeance, a much easier one to get for all of us rogues out there. Uh, this drops out of the Blood Furnace, uh, which is a dungeon in the Burning Crusade. And it drops from the boss, Keladan the Breaker. So it is not as good as the um, as the Terra Weave Tunic, but it is going to do us just fine for getting into Karazhan. Now, a third one that I wanted to show you guys is called the Primal Strike Vest. The reason why I don't recommend this one to start with is, well, it because it requires leatherworking. So I don't want to tell you guys you have to take this specific profession because you need to get this gear. There's a lot of really suitable alternatives out there, as, as we can see. But if you are leatherworking and you are elemental leatherworking specifically, you can make this chess piece and benefit from the set bonus from it, uh, which can be quite nice. Okay, so let's talk about back pieces. Uh, again, the best in slot one that you can get before going into Karazhan is another one that's going to be extremely hard to get. It drops as well off of the Doomwalker, which is that world boss that's in Shadow Moon Valley. Uh, it's going to be very difficult once again to try and get, so I don't think a lot of us are going to be able to see this back piece. It's very good for what it is, uh, so if you are one of the lucky few, hats off to you. Uh, but for the rest of us, there are some uh, pretty decent items out there. The other one that you can try to go for, guys, is called the Akanai Death Shroud. This drops as well out of Akanai Crypts off of the Avatar of the Martyred. So there's a lot of really good reasons to go do that boss, guys. There's a couple pieces of gear uh, that we do want to try to grab out of Akanai Crypts. So that is a pretty solid one. If you're a tailor or maybe you have a tailoring alt or you have a lot of money, you can also try to go for the Vengeance Wrap. So the Vengeance Wrap is uh, created by tailors. It is a pretty hefty price, especially at the very beginning of the Burning Crusade. Uh, all of the prices on everything, it's just going to be extremely inflated. So unless you have a guild maybe that can get you the supplies or a guild tailor or you're a tailor yourself uh, and you can make this, I would probably just go after the Akanai Death Shroud as well. All right, now for the wrist slot, we have a few choices as well. The best ones that you can get that you're going to want to try and grab before going into any of those raids are called the Nightfall Wrist Guards. Those drop off of the Epoch Hunter in Old Hillsbrad Foothills. So if you can get a group together and try to farm these, that would be your best. If you're having trouble, though, you can get one from a quest. They're called the Spy Mistress's Wrist Guards. Uh, these are done by completing the quest Soul Devices, and Soul Devices, it basically requires you to go into the Shadow Labyrinth. Should be pretty easy, so if you're if you're going into your raid tomorrow and you still don't have a really good wrist piece, you can just try to knock out this quest real quick and get something. Uh, again, I will show a crafted piece of gear here. This is if you are an elemental leather worker only. So you can only equip this if you have that specific type of leather working. But the Primal Strike Bracers are quite good. Uh, so if you are a leather worker, you might as well take advantage of that and craft you a pair of these as the stats on them are very nice. Okay, so for hands, are they're pretty straightforward. Uh, the ones you're going to want to try to grab come out of the dungeon Black Morass, which is in the Caverns of Time. Uh, they are called the Hand Grips of Assassination, and they drop off of the final boss, Aeonis. Now, if you're having, again, trouble, you can't find your group, or you're just not getting very lucky with them dropping, you can go for a crafted piece of gear called the Fell Leather Gloves. Uh, I don't think these are going to be overly expensive. These are not, um, they don't require too many materials. But again, at the beginning of the game, all the materials might be inflated as people are trying to power level their professions. So these gloves might be quite expensive. If so, just go for the ones out of Black Morass. Uh, keep in mind that the fell leather gloves are equipable by others who do not have leather working. 
but you do not get the set bonus. But because the set bonus is 20 dodge rating, we don't really care. It's statted enough nicely, and they have uh, really nice sockets in them, so the 20 dodge rating, we basically don't care about at all for PvE. Okay, so for waste guys, we also get pretty lucky because the best in slot one before heading into any raids is called the Girdle of the Death Dealer, and that drops out of Black Morass as well off of the boss Aeonis. Uh, so head into Black Morass, make sure you try to grab those two items that drop off of this boss. Uh, it would be pretty nice to have before you enter a raid. Again though, I'm going to give you guys some alternatives in case you're having some bad luck or can't get it or whatever the reason might be. Uh, the other one you can try to get is called the Epoch's Whispering Cinch. Uh, this is out of a different dungeon called the Old uh, Hillsbrad Foothills off of the Epoch Hunter. Uh, so you can try your luck at that one, or maybe you're having an easier time finding a group that wants to run that dungeon. I will put a third item up here, which is from a quest called the Turning Point. This is quite a nice belt as well, but keep in mind that this is for Scryers only. So when you head to Shatrath for the first time, you have to pick between Outdoor and Scryer. Uh, most of us should be picking Outdoor if you're playing a Rogue, but if for some reason you have picked Scryer, uh, make sure you pick up this belt. Uh, it's just uh, one of the quests that you do while you do quests for them. I'll get into the reasons why we're going to pick Outdoor in the next item slot. All right, now for rings, guys, I'm going to be giving several suggestions as well because obviously we're going to need two of them. The first ring here, it does drop off of a world boss, so it is going to be very difficult to get. It's called the Ring of Reciprocity. It drops off of the world boss Doom Lord Kazak in Hellfire Peninsula. Good luck getting one of these. If you do manage to get it, you should probably go buy a lottery ticket that same day because it's going to be really difficult. You're not going to see many of these. Uh, if you're not able to kill that world boss, you can also try to go for either of these two rings or both of them. So the first one here is called Shafar's Band of Brutality. This one drops off of the boss Yor into Monotombs. Uh, you just run that dungeon. It has a okay chance to drop off of him. It's not fantastic to be honest with you, but you might get lucky if you run Monotombs enough. And you might as well run it because we need to get those badges of justice anyways. The third one here is the reason why we're going to be picking Aldor when we head to Shatrath. Uh, because it's a lot more difficult to get good rings in uh, the Burning Crusade before we go into those raids. We want to go Aldor because they, drop, they give you a quest that gives you Kaelin's Signet. And this ring is really good because it gives you a lot of awesome hit rating, agility, and attack power. There's no wasted stats on it. We literally want everything that it has. So if that's not enough reason for you to go for that faction, I mean, I guess it's up to you, but this is a, this is a reason enough for me to pick them. Okay, so for the leg slot, uh, we do have a few options once again. The best ones that you're going to want to try to get are called the Midnight Leg Guards. Uh, they drop off of the boss Quag Mirren in the Slave Pens. They have a decent drop rate, so I don't think you should be having any issues really getting these. Again, I'll give you some alternatives though, just in case. You can also try to go for the Waste Walker leggings. Uh, these drop off of the Nexus Prince Shafar in Monotombs. So maybe your group's running Monotombs a lot more. You pick these up. Not a bad grab at all. And you can try to get that set bonus if you are picking up the other Waste Walker piece that we described earlier. Uh, I'll again list one more. This is that crafted set that we were looking at earlier. This is the Fell Leather Leggings. Keep in mind, though, once again, unless you're a leather worker, you're not going to be able to benefit from that three set bonus. We're pretty much just grabbing this for the stats and for the sockets. Okay, so for feet, you guys are definitely going to want to try to shell out a little bit of gold and pick up the fell leather boots. Uh, these are actually one of the best ones you can get before going into any of the raids. So if you can, guys, try to pick up a pair of these if you can't make them yourself. Once again, I'll just say what I've been saying for the other ones. If you're not a leather worker, you cannot get the benefit of the three set bonus, but it doesn't matter anyways because the stats on it and the sockets on it are very, very good. I will put up a few alternatives though. Maybe they're going for insane prices on your server or you can't find one. Uh, you can try to get what's called the master's treads. These ones are Probably not going to be the ones you're going for, though, as they are a world drop, so you just have to luck out, essentially, or maybe try to pick one up for cheap off the auction house if 
somebody didn't know maybe what they're selling. Uh, but a third more, uh, I would say, farmable one, an easier one to get, is the Fell Boar Hide Shoes. This is actually done off of a quest called the Cipher of Dam Damnation, the third fragment recovered. Uh, so you just finish this quest. It is in Shadow Moon Valley, and you can pick these boots up as the reward. Alrighty, so for trinkets, it does get a little bit more complicated. I'm just going to show you these four here. I'm not going to reveal them one at a time so because we have a little bit to talk about with them. Uh, the trinkets on the left, you can get in the Burning Crusade. And the trinkets on the right, you can only get out of Vanilla WoW. So the classic WoW that we're all playing right now. Um, so I kind of want to go over that a little bit here and it gets a little bit dicey depending on what fight you're doing. So the mark of the champion is off of Kel'Thuzad and Naxxramas. That's in vanilla WoW. Uh, if you kill Kel'Thuzad, you get his head and you turn that in, you can get the mark of the champion. The effect here is absolutely insane. It is the best one that we can get in phase one if you're fighting undead and demons. Obviously, if you're not fighting undead or demons, uh, this trinket's absolutely useless. But if you are, it outsims everything else. So if you can manage to get one of those or maybe even do a run of that in Burning Crusade, uh, it's absolutely worth picking up. The item underneath it, which is called Slayer's Crest, it's not the best trinket that you can get in Burning Crusade, but it is extremely good. Uh, this one drops off of the boss Saffron as well out of Naxxramas. That's the boss that's right before Kel'Thuzad. Uh, so if you are able to pick this up before Burning Crusade begins, or if you're watching this and Burning Crusade has already started, maybe you even it's worth going back to Vanilla WoW and doing that raid just to pick up the Slayer's Crest. Let's say that neither of those things are an option for you, though. You can pick up these other two trinkets, the Bloodlust Brooch and the Abacus of Violent Odds. So the Bloodlust Brooch, that is 41 Badges of Justice. Again, we get those Badges of Justice from doing Heroic Dungeons. And 41 shouldn't take you too long, maybe a few weeks to get that up to if you're saving. Uh, the Abacus of Violent Odds, that just drops off of a boss in the Mechanar. It drops from the Pathalon, Pathalon the Calculator. So neither of those should be too difficult to pick up. Uh, some honorable mentions, Dragonfang Talisman is pretty high up on the list for Prebus as well. So if you happen to have one of those from Blackwing Lair in Classic WoW, uh, that would serve pretty well for you for a while. Ranged weapons, we also have a variety of choices. I've put up these two here um, because it does depend on what faction you are, depending on if you'll get the musket or if you will get the bow. Uh, both of these are obtained by reaching exal Exalted with your Hellfire Peninsula faction, whether that's Thralmar or that's the Honor Hold. Uh, you can see that they're exactly the same except for being a different weapon type. Uh, so if you're able to hit Exalted, definitely try to grab that if you haven't picked up a better one in a raid. Um, this is technically Karazhan Priebus, but hitting Exalted is going to be pretty difficult before you step in the raid. Uh, none of the raids in Phase 1 are too difficult that you're going to probably need to hit Exalted first. The second one here I'll show you is called the Barrel Blade Long Rifle. Now this is one of those really difficult to get ones dropped by the Doomwalker in Shadow Moon Valley. That world boss that a few of the other best in slot items drop off of as well. But don't worry because there is always uh, Mama's Insurance which you can get from the quest Decline Doomclaw. Uh, so this is done in Netherstorm. If you haven't been able to pick up any of those, you're not exalted yet, make sure you head over to Netherstorm and just finish this quest and you can pick up Mama's Insurance. Okay, so let's talk about weapons. So specifically, we're going to be looking at main hand weapons and we're going to take a look at offhand weapons next. Um, there's going to be a lot of options for you guys, depending on what spec you want to go or if you do have a preference in weapon. Uh, typically, your main hand weapon, you just want it to be something really slow uh, and that has a really high top end damage. So that could be a mace, a sword, or a fist weapon. All you have to do if you're playing combat swords uh, and you do get a different main hand weapon, let's say you get a fist weapon, you just also take the five points in your fist weapon specialization uh, and you can equip that without really any issue. Now, I have ordered this in terms of what the best one is compared to what the worst ones are, but all of them should be pretty solid as far as going into those phase one raids. 
if you are in a, a, like a PvP fanatic, you can go for the Gladiator Slicer. Even if you're not really into PvP, it's probably worth trying to farm this out over several weeks. They do have an arena point cap, uh, and this one is going to cost you quite a lot. Uh, it costs you 2,283 arena points to get the Gladiator Slicer, but if you do manage to farm it, it will be quite good. The second one here is the Dragon Maw. So the Dragon Maw is a crafted weapon and you have to be a master hammersmith. So if your rogue for whatever reason is a master hammersmith, then I would absolutely recommend that you craft one of these because it is extremely good. Now the next three you can get through a bit more traditional means or easier means. Uh, the Blade Fist here is a weapon that drops off of the War Chief Kargath Blade Fist in the Shattered Halls. It doesn't have an extremely high drop rate, but it is a dungeon that you can just keep farming, so maybe you'll have better luck there. Some easier ones even still to get are the Reflex Blades. This is out of the Architraz that drops off of the boss Dahlia the Doomsayer. Uh, and you should have a little bit of an easier time grabbing that. But a, a fifth one even that you can watch out for is called Claw of the Watcher. This drops in Akanai Crypts off of the boss Shirok. So just make sure you grab one of these weapons, guys. There are some other weapons that you can grab that are fairly suitable, but these are going to be the five that you're really going to want to watch out for for your main hand slot. All right, everybody. And finally, we're going to want to try to grab a really good offhand weapon before heading into any of those raids. So I have three up here on the screen that you can try to grab before going into any of those phase one raids. Um, obviously, the best one is probably going to be the Gladiator's Quick Blade. This is quite a bit cheaper than the Slicer that we looked at previously. This is only 1,125 arena points, so that will probably only take maybe three or four weeks of doing arenas um, minimally even to get that weapon, and it's, it's quite a good one. Uh, it is more important that our offhand is a sword if we are doing sword spec just because of how that proc rate works in our talents. Um, so I have only listed swords here, but there are some other decent offhand weapons, um, but really you're going to want to try to grab a sword. Uh, the second one that I've listed here is a crafted weapon. So again, this is for blacksmith, master swordsmiths only, and it is called Fire Guard. Uh, it is quite a good weapon. Again, it has quite a lot of hit rating on it, which is really what we want to have in the Burning Crusade. And if you're not able to grab any of those two other weapons, you can always grab Latro's Shifting Sword. This is a, a bit more uh, easy to farm. This is in a dungeon boss, Aeonis in the Black Morass. There are a few other pieces of gear we've already talked about that drop off of that boss as well. So this is a really important dungeon for you to run as a rogue, and grabbing this is going to be really great. Mainly... If you're not able to get these types of offhand weapons or you're having difficulty with your main hand weapon, you kind of just want to follow the simple formula of the slower your main hand weapon is and the higher top damage that it is. Somewhere between like 2.3, I think, and 2.6 weapon speed is the is what you're looking for. Um, that's going to be suitable for your main hand and for your offhand. You want it anywhere from like 1.4 to 1.6. Uh, the stats on it aren't as important. You just really want it to be quick so that you can get extra weapon procs and more poison procs as well. All right, everybody, give yourself a pat on the back. That's the end of the video. We've taken a look at all the items you're going to want to try to grab before heading into any of those phase one raids. Hopefully this was helpful for you and you can try to pick up some of those more difficult items. But if not, those alternatives are just as solid and will serve you very well in the phase one raids of the Burning Crusade. Again, if this was a helpful video for you, it would really mean a lot to me if you subscribe to the channel and also check me out on Twitch. Once again, I'll be over at twitch.tv slash apoptosis808 streaming the Burning Crusade and other games as well. Have a good one, guys, and I'll see you next time.